It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I wasn't feeling too good. 2019 pandemic, job loss, universal credit, work from home, learn from home, teach from home, panic, unhealed trauma, the silent cries of domestic violence and the untold stories of broken families. Believe me, I've been there. I know how it goes. All lives matter and black lives matter too. Go outside. Don't go outside. Masks on, masks off, and together we held on to hope. We painted rainbows, cried for our losses, and clapped for our heroes. You see, my friends, the world is changing. But let's not underestimate the resilience, the compassion, and the courage that you had to keep on going in the midst of uncertain times. And I'm sure you'll agree that the majority of us would never have thought that in 2019, with all the medical advancements and technological machinery, that something we cannot see would control our reality, our present, and our future. Now, I remember being at home during this time. I mean, where else would I be? <laughs> and I was feeling helpless and sorry for myself. What will I do now? How long will this thing last? And what is my purpose in life? But how dare I ask these questions when I had shelter, I had food, warmth, and even more importantly, I had access to internet connection, which means I had a advantage to digitally upskill myself and take my education into my own hands. And I came across an opportunity that combined my artistic, creative, and business skills into one. And I joined the very first XR digital boot camp for black women delivered right here in my beloved hometown of Birmingham. Now, opportunities like this, they don't come around often. So I quickly embraced it, you know? I took the time to learn something that I had limited knowledge about alongside amazing women who, just like me, wanted to learn how to shape the future. And this is where my, very, uh, my virtual reality journey began, and I built my very first VR prototype, and I became a qualified Unity artist developer. But while I was learning the power of my VR headset, I was hearing announcements across the media in articles, blogs, and forums about the launch of a brand new immersive world called Metaverse. But what exactly is the Metaverse? Why should we care when we're already living in the real world? Or are we? Now, this definition here is from Cambridge English Dictionary, and it defines the metaverse as a virtual world where humans as avatars will interact with each other in a three-dimensional space that mimics reality. And in October 2021, Facebook changed its name to Meta and announced that it is building a mega metaverse for people to work, play, and socialize using virtual reality technology. But if we dig a little deeper and explore the word meta, we find that it's described in ancient Greek language meaning after, beyond amongst and in between, which relates to the dimensions of forwards and backwards, above and below, inwards and outwards, and even rotational. And if we dig a little bit more, we find this symbol. This is known as Metatron's cube.
And we learn that the word Metatron has been described in religious texts, in Judaism and Christianity. Metatron is the name of an angle, <clears throat> sorry, I mean angel, easily done. Now here's what's special about the Metatron cube. All of these connecting lines that you see are, create all the angles containing every 2D shape that make up our universe. And the Metatron symbol is said to be found scribed in the walls of Egyptian temples. So perhaps the word metaverse has a direct connection to ancient civilization. This is interesting, right? Because when I first discovered this, I was fascinated because I wanted to find the cross-section between my love for technology and how it harmonizes and sometimes even conflicts with my spiritual uh, views and lifestyle. Perhaps you can relate. So, for example, as much as I'm excited by technology, I have experienced many of its benefits, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned about being disconnected to nature, <laughs> disconnected to in-person social interactions, the use of my smart appliances in my home and the sharing of my personal data online can sometimes feel mm, uh, intrusive. <laughs> and so I empathize with those who feel apprehensive about technology, but I can relate to those who are excited by its infinite possibilities. So I guess then a uh, love me, love me not relationship with tech is probably something we shouldn't dismiss, particularly if we are to continue to embrace its seamless integration into the world, there's a need for us to understand technology better which is exactly what the technologists and the scientific teachings of quantum theory and physicists have been doing for many years, experimenting and exploring ways that some may refer to as, as pseudoscience, like string theory and supersymmetry to help us make sense of the world. Meet Professor James Gate. He's a theoretical theorist and physicist from the University of Maryland, and his work on supersymmetry theory suggests that we may, in fact, be living in a matrix. His work explains that through the internal structure of minute subatomic particles, there are a set of specific codes made up of binary ones and zeros found in everything that makes up the structure of our reality. The codes he discovered are known as error correcting codes and these are the same codes that run our search engines and web browsers. Now stick with me. So we've just learned that the definition of the metaverse is an immersive virtual reality that mimics our real life environment. And we discovered that the origins of the metaverse has a direct connection to ancient civilization. But now we're learning that scientists are decoding the universe only to find that those very same codes are running our reality. And another thing, the codes that have been named after symbols created by the Akan people of Ghana in West Africa are called Adrinka codes, which translates to, he who does not know will know from learning. Okay, it's, uh, it's time to breathe. Just let us sink. Because people, if this is the case, then are we already living in a so-called metaverse? Creating an extension of the world through the advancement of virtual and augmented reality? Perhaps then, is our world shifting into a higher level of consciousness? And through technology, are we advancing our human capabilities? Am I, am I an avatar? Well, what if I was to tell you that your human DNA can actually store data and files, images, PDF, WAV files, videos, your dig digital currency, your Bitcoin passwords, your diary even, you name it, through the means of science and technology, researchers have discovered ways to decode our DNA into the binary computing language of ones and zeros. 
<laughs> they use it to store data. And currently, the billions of data that we generate daily is stored in the cloud. I'm getting lost here. But not that cloud. This cloud. More like these huge blocks of hardware held in data storage centers around the world. And big tech companies, you know what they're doing? They've collaborated with um, academia establishments on research to demonstrate the creation of an automated system that can retrieve data files using snippets of fabricated DNA. But currently, the cost... <clears throat> of storing your family photos in your toenail is going to cost you thousands of pounds. So let's just stick to the cloud for now, yeah? And don't forget, always back it up. Which brings me to question, am I, am I a hard drive? Hmm, because it's proving quite likely. So let's uh, buckle up and take this carousel ride together. You might be thinking, Marika, you have told us some big information here. But when the metaverse arrives, what will we do when we get there? Well, first of all, you're going to need one of these. A VR headset best experienced on low latency Wi-Fi connection like 5G. A headset will give you access to view and experience an immersive virtual reality and enter into metaverses that are being created and adopted by big tech companies, fashion, entertainment, and gaming industries. They're all getting involved, right? And they want you to be a part of it. But it's important to note that the tech industry is in its early stages of building out this radical vision. And to help extend your imagination, you may have come across the sci-fi films and the cult novels like Ready Player One, Black Mirror, Matrix, and Snow Crash. They all painted this exciting, interoperable, parallel universes, ones which allow us to move fluidly from one virtual space into another in a bid to escape the tragedies of reality. However, the optimist in me, I believe the metaverse could well be considered as an extension of our existing reality rather than a replacement of our current world. For instance, the healthcare sector are trialing new ways to use virtual reality for medical professionals so they can be in a virtual space together in different countries to consult, demonstrate complex operations with accuracy. And the education industry are discovering ways to reimagine the classroom environment as a tool to teach a variety of subjects. So bye bye to boring history lessons and hello to learning about the solar system and feeling like you're standing on top of the world. You see, the possibilities of the metaverse has been envisioned as an opportunity for us to adopt a new version of the internet called Web3. That's right. The internet the internet is evolving, it's getting a glow up, and it's finally bringing us the capacity to own our data, experience these interoperable platforms, and build and use our digital and social currency. So I suggest you keep your mind on your money and your money on your blockchain. I know, I know, I know it's a lot to take in, but it comes down to this. The metaverse will transform how we learn, work, play, and socialize. The internet is evolving into Web3, and our digital currency is real. Our DNA can, in fact, store data, and everything in this universe is connected. Am I... Am I afraid? <laughs> My friends, we must not forget that we are vibrational beings having a human experience. Everything that I've shared with you today are theories, definitions, and ideas for us to together understand the connections between what we know, what we think we thought we knew about us, about the world, and about the infinite possibilities of technology. And it's anticipated that there will be 148 million tech jobs worldwide and three million tech jobs in the UK by 2025, and that's really not far away. In fact, many of those tech roles, they don't even exist yet. 
but what does exist is you. The opportunity for you to unlock your digital capability. Regardless of your industry or your artistry, you are the frontiers of this world. And I remember how excited I was when I learned how to animate 3D shapes and render objects and bring them into virtual reality spaces. So I recommend this. I recommend we become students of life. We dedicate our time to upskill ourselves and understand our internal technology. We got to master our human skills our ability to communicate, to empathize, and work in collaboration with each other. And then we got to go above and beyond. We got to discover and learn about technologies that will help us improve our life and benefit our communities. We will come across challenges and forces that may feel beyond our control, but without the knowledge, people, and without the understanding of our technical world, we fail to advance and make a difference. Today, I am here as just a messenger. Do not be afraid. Instead, be inspired, be aware, and be expansive, and open to learn with humility, with the curiosity to search for new insights. Please, be childlike in your discoveries and playful with your imaginations, and then ask yourself this. Does it really matter?